In the future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. We may never know their names, yet Jody McBrayer brings the brightest talent to the forefront. Right here on Backline with Jody McBrayer. Exclusively on UBN Radio TV. Hey! Sorry we're starting a little late, everybody. I'm so sorry I had a little technical difficulty on my end, but thank you so much for joining me for Backline. I'm Jody McBrayer. I'm so glad you guys are here. I am broadcasting from Nashville, Tennessee tonight, so um, sorry that I'm actually not in studio, but at least, you, um, at least you're here with me, and that's all that matters. And um, something else that matters, and it's a big deal to me, is I am so excited and pleased to welcome my special guest tonight, Mrs. Kayla Balch. Would you see, say hello to Kayla, everyone? Hello, hello. Kayla, thank you so hey. much. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. You are with child and ready to birth at any moment. Oh, my word, Jody. <laughs> any moment, really. Seriously, so are you in no. your 10th you month or what? <laughs> I, it could really be any day, any minute. So uh, I guess if, if I drop the phone, you'll know. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have an excuse. You're the only guest I've ever had that has an excuse to to bail in the middle of an interview. Cause so, uh, absolutely. But congratulations. This now, what baby is this for you? How many will that be? Thank you so much. Um, yeah, this is number two. Okay. Um, and I have one daughter who's two years old, almost two years old. Um, and her name is Myla. And huh. then she's uh, being joined by a baby sister here um, sometime in the next couple weeks. So yes. I am beyond excited. Oh, <laughs> you should be. Congratulations. That's so awesome. I, I know, um, yeah, I've seen you several times during the process of this pregnancy. And every time I see you, you're just glowing. You look amazing. And they're seeing uh, the, the folks that are watching on the Internet. Some people just listen, but some people do watch via the Internet. They're seeing that beautiful picture that you sent. And when I sent that to Tony today to, to, <laughs> for us to be like, wow, she's pretty. I'm like, I know she looks great. You look exactly Aww. the same, except you got a basket. You're so kind. So thank, <laughs> thank you, so you much very much. For- Thank you for doing this and for being here with with us on Backline. Um, you know, you and I, you and I have known it's each other. Honor to be part. Well, I'm I'm glad you're here, and and we've known each other for a while. Yes, we have. I, I think now, were you living? Because are you always a Cal? Have you always been a Californian? Yeah, I have been in California now for well, let's see, fifteen, a little over fifteen years. Wow. So I can really, really call it home. I'm no longer a transplant. <laughs> <laughs> well. but, um, yeah, I, I, I actually grew up in Nebraska, and then I came out here to go to college, and I just stayed. I, I couldn't get away from this weather and everything else I had to offer. So, well, I mean, yeah. it's, it is great. I mean, it, it does kind of suck you in a little bit, you know. And then when you get when you get plugged in like you have musically too, it's sort of hard to leave as well, you know. So this is true. This is totally true. Get that. But you and I got to know each other uh, back when I was in Avalon. Towards my in, the end of my stint in Avalon, we did um, a tour called Women of Faith. It's a big nationwide women's conference thing that goes to arenas. And you were part of the Women of Faith worship team at the time, right? Yes. yes. I, I was a part of the Women of Faith worship team from uh, 2004 to 2006. So I did it three years. Um, loved it, loved it, loved it, you know, um, so much to love about it, but especially the people getting to know the people behind the scenes and really build relationships with all the speakers and people like yourself. (laughs) It just was a really, um, priceless opportunity and just kind of really a jumpstart to, um, anything I did with music. So, um, I'm, I'm grateful for those three years. And then since then, it's just been cool to see looking back how, you know, the next door open and the next door open and 
you, you could never write your own your own story, but um, but it's just been cool to see how it's turned out. But it's definitely got a jump start with women of faith. So, well, yeah. and it's- it's a great way to jump. I mean, you know, sing, anytime you can sing live like that, and, you know, singing in arenas is about as live as you can get, but anytime you can do that, it's right. great. Now, where did you go to school? I went to school at Azusa Pacific University. Okay. So you're an APU girl, too. I am. I am, I am. And um, also, another great experience, um, I was actually, oddly enough, I was a physical education major there. So I was involved in, the music, <laughs> involved in the music program, like the choir and the small groups. And, um, you know, when I was doing all these small groups, I love group singing just in general. But um, when I was doing all these small groups, you know, one of my biggest influences at that time was this little group called Avalon, you know, and I thought, oh, if we could just sound like them and you know, never, never quite got there, but no, it's, it, it was a fun, fun experience. And I'm thankful for my, you know, PE classes on the side to kind of keep me balanced. So, well, I mean, you know, it was I'm, good. So have you used that at all? I mean, so did you get your degree in physical education? I did. I did, believe it or not. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I started out a music major and at the time, they didn't have a commercial music program, and so I just thought, well, that's really what I want to do. You know, I, I wasn't looking to be like a, a music professor or music teacher or anything like that. I really wanted to get in the commercial side of it. Yeah. And um, so I, I decided, well, the other thing I love and, you know, could actually study and <laughs> graduate um, <laughs> is is, <laughs> is uh, something with fitness, you know, and their phys ed kinesiology program just it, it looked like the right fit if I was going to do something else. So I decided to go that route kind of as a, as a backup plan, but still pursue the music. And so I did, I ended up finishing thankful. I did it. I was a personal trainer for a minute. <laughs> then, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, just kept, kept pursuing the music thing and it, it ended up unfolding. So. Well, out. <laughs> yeah, it obviously has worked out. So I, I want to ask you this question because it's kind of weird because I'm looking at your resume right now. How did you jump from women of faith and doing all these Christian things to Sergio Mendez? <laughs> How did that happen? I know, right? <laughs> I, I talk about like night and day. Right. Yeah. I, you know what? It's, it's one of those funny things. Um, I, first of all, my first demo I ever put together, um, demo reel I did was, right before I graduated from APU, I thought, you know, I want to get this done, kind of just network and see if, see if there's anything out there for session singing, even for me. And, right. and, you know, I was warned, Oh, it's a tight, it's a small group, tight knit group and it's hard to break in. And, but you know, you never know until you throw yourself out there. So just That's- like the couple people I knew one, one contractor um, here in town, I sent it to just blindly. I said, Hey, you know, I know you know so and so, and I just, you know, get my demo out there. Never heard back from her until about four years later. She called me out of the blue, and here's the funny part: I was I was kind of ending my third year with Women of Faith, and I had just picked up this random CD at Starbucks because I was like, this cover is really cool, and it's world music. I'm not really into world music, but it looked like a fun collaboration with Sergio Mendes, this guy, Sergio Mendes. I don't know who that is <laughs> with all these hip hop artists, but I knew kind of all the guest artists. So I picked it up and I um, started listening to it. I thought, this is awesome. Like this bossa nova sound, this song of bossa nova sound mixed with hip hop was brilliant. So I was literally listening to it in my car. I get this call from the contractor and she says, Hey, have you ever heard of Sergio Mendez? I said, uh-uh. What in the world? I said, Well, in fact, I have now. I said, I, I just got his new album and I've been listening to it on top. And she said, Well, they're looking for an, uh, you know, generally they have two female singers do all the singing and they're looking for one replacement. And she said, I just found your demo in my file and I thought, Your voice 
really fits the sound of what they're looking for. Would you be interested? And I said, how could I say no? Yeah. <laughs> um, sort of meant to be. Yeah. And then I, once I said yes, I thought, oh, dear, I don't know a word of Portuguese, and I'm about to sing everything in Portuguese. <laughs> so, um, and, and Portuguese was, is not easy. No, it is not. So thankfully, they worked with me um, over a series of a couple months, um, just, you know, making sure I have the uh, believable accent yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the sound that they wanted. And that was really a, man, it, I learned so much from that gig, learned so much musically. Um, it really forced me to just kind of jump to the next level. Yeah. and. Um, you know, not just with the language, but with the music, and and um, I'm so glad for that opportunity. And that was really the first time I had a chance to travel um, internationally, which was super, super fun. Um, I did that for about oh six, seven months. Um, toured with that, you know, and mind you, I had just done Women of Faith and had been involved in that for a long time. So came to about six or seven months and. Um, thought you know what it's I need a break (laughs) just getting off the road and I've been married now for 13 years um you know and I I just thought wow I'm spending a lot of time away yeah it's hard it is you know I don't know if you can relate to that but (laughs) it can get hard so um anyway for personal reasons I ended up saying you know what I think I think I better move on and I just need a break. And that was a little, little tough to do um, just in my journey to just say, Hey, I need to quit this for a bit, but just trust that, you know, eventually, um, you know, the next door will open. So, and I'm glad I did that, you know, in hindsight, looking back, I grew a lot from that. It was really humbling to say, I'm taking a break. Cause a lot of times, um, you know, you could think, oh, I'll lose momentum, and then, you know, I won't be able to keep going if I yeah. if I say no to anything. And that was probably the best decision I ever made, um, both both personally and for my family. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I don't think you can ever go wrong making that decision. You know, I, I think I totally understand what you're saying, and I think anybody who is involved in music that's listening knows you're always afraid to say no to anything because you're afraid if you say no once, they'll never call again or whatever. But it's like, uh, you know, I'm 45 years old. I've been doing this probably, you know, 30 of the 45 years of my life. And, you know, I've said no to a lot of things and and somehow I'm still working. So, you know, if it's meant to be, God works it out. It always works out that way. And um, obviously you said no and and you made some choices in your life and here you are, you're still working. And before we go any further, I I want, um, I want people to hear your voice. Um, Okay. This show is all about showcasing the people who are behind the scenes, um, talking about, you know, the, the music makers, the people that maybe people don't necessarily see, but that, you know, you establish and you're the foundation for a lot of music and a lot of artists, but also you work on your own stuff. And that's something else that I wanted to always do is just kind of give people a platform and a chance to promote their own things. And you are in the process of working on some new music. Is that not correct? I am. I am working on some new music. Um, producer Mano Haynes, um, who is under Riverflow Entertainment, or basically runs <laughs> Riverflow Entertainment, he um, he is working, he and I have been working together for, off and on for the last few years, um, just on a few tunes. And, you know, we're, we're wanting to continue that process, um, you know, in between sessions, babies, and <laughs> everything else. So, um, well. yeah, I, I, I did a, a couple, couple songs that are like officially completed and really, um, has been a great partnership and I'm excited to show them to you guys. Perfect. Well, okay. I've got two brand new songs here. So we've got love, please hurry and wait for me. Which one do you want to start out the gate with? Let's um let's do uh Love Please Hurry. Okay. Tell me about Love Please Hurry really quick before we listen to it. You know what? Love Please Hurry is it's a great song because it's it's 
I don't say it's it's catchy. It gets your attention, and it's it's um. What I love about it is it's universal. You know, it's definitely what my heart would say, but it's it's universal. I think we can all relate. Like we need love. We need more love amongst each other and in this world, obviously yeah. as a whole. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, and so it it is lighthearted. It's not you know super deep or anything, and and yet. I, I, kind of love that about it sometimes we need a break from <laughs> from the deep stuff as much as i love the deep songs um oh, i totally this, agree yeah and i just feel like this is something you turn on and just go yeah you know it's it sort of says the same thing over and over and yet it's catchy and and fun so i hope you enjoy it yeah well then let's let's listen to that one this is uh this is sort of like a world premiere in some respects so i'm so excited but this is <laughs> kayla balch and this is love please hurry Talk, we're chatting and, and Skyping back and forth through the chat while we're listening. He's like, I love this song. I'm like, I do too. This is so... Oh, yay. Oh, Thank you. I love it. And it's perfect for right now too because everybody just Isn't needs to sh true? shut up and love each other for Pete's sake. 
<laughs> this is true. This Ugh. is true. We won't, I know. We won't get political on everybody right now. This is where this is about the music and not about the politics. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about what you're doing currently besides, you know, making this record, of course, which we'll sort of get to that towards the end. But, um, you know, you've been a part of the Glee family. Um, yeah. And, and I know that that's been a really big, a big deal for you. Um, we could talk about some of that, too. But, um, you know, I, I want to talk some. I, I always like to ask the question of my guests, like, what is what is that moment so far in your career, because your career, you know, is relatively, you know, I mean, it's not new, but I mean, you're still young and you've got a long career ahead of you. But so far, what is that one thing that you look at and you go, oh my gosh, this is it. This is something I've dreamed of doing my whole life and I can't believe I'm here or I can't believe I'm doing it. Have you had that moment yet? Jody, I have to say, it's so funny. A lot of these opportunities I, I I honestly don't know if I could pinpoint one. Like all of these opportunities that I've been blessed with, I have had m like moments of like, what am I doing here? Like this is amazing. I mean, it, from from Women of Faith standing on that stage at Women of Faith to um, Sergio Mendez, you know, like this '60s legend, you know, to to singing on a Glee session to a movie soundtrack. Like I. I'm going, how in the world did I get here? I still have those moments. Like, well, I, I don't know if I could, like, well, okay, down you know, it's one. Hard. I know it's hard to pinpoint just one. I mean, I get that because yeah. I'm, you know, I'm looking over your resume right now at some of the, you know, just some of the movie soundtracks that you've sung on and some of the opportunities that you've had. And, you know, I mean, it is, it's kind of crazy. I mean, like, okay, for example, I'll just read some of them off here since you're not going to brag about yourself, but <laughs> you've done BGVs on American Idol, uh, Mad TV, uh, The Voice, uh, Dancing with the Stars, Rising Star. You've sung on box office hits like Pitch Perfect, The Lorax, Happy Feet 2, Rock of Ages, Disney's Tinkerbell, Pixie Hollow, um, you know, The Pirate Fairy, Soul Surfer. I mean... All of these movies that you had the chance to sing on, not to mention you've been on commercials, you were on the World of Warcraft and Starcraft singing on that, uh, the Disney Sound Station Parade, uh, commercials for T-Mobile, Chevron, Acura, you've sung with Barry Manilow, Cher, Shaka Khan, Neil Young, Josh Groban, Seal, Queen Latifah, Johnny Lang, Mary J. Bl I mean, for Pete's sake, you know, it's, <laughs> how in the world could you, you know, every time, for me, if I would be like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm in the studio singing for Mary J. Blige. And then, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm in the studio singing for Barry Man. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, you know. So yeah, it's a lot. Totally. It's a lot. Totally. But, but okay, growing up, like, okay, I have to say this. I'm talking a lot, but I'm going to give you a chance here just a second. I, my no, mind no, no, is okay. so, um, You did a black and white session. We talk about the black and white sessions a lot. And Carrie Larson is a friend yes. of the show. She's been on. And I sang a black and white session, blah, blah, blah. But you sang yeah, yeah. an Anita Baker song for your black and white sessions. I did. You know what? I, I have to say, like, gospel and soul music in general. I know that's I know that's a really general way to put it. But, like, those singers, to me, have probably been my biggest influences. And, um, yeah, they, they have been my biggest influences. And I just felt, felt like... You know what? Actually, how I came about doing that song, um, Carrie was like, "I think you should do something by Anita Baker." I was like, "Whoa, let me let me dig back and you know, <laughs> yes, like those songs are great." But anytime I hear those, I feel like that has been my biggest influence. Those are the people I've tried to em emulate um, in my sound. You know, whether I'm consciously doing that or not, but like those are the people I've listened to, and. Um, tone is such a big thing for me so yeah. i know i'm kind of i'm sorry i'm veering off a little bit but i just no no, no, no. This, is, this is all good this is all good okay so i'm <laughs> influences are like anybody with soul i just felt like drawn to that and wanting to emulate that and like tone was such a big thing for me tone um obviously skill you know i mean i love the mariah carries the stevie wonders the you know Stevie Wonder, there's only one. Stevie Wonder, <laughs> Mariah Carey, you know, Celine Dion, those that just have this, the range and the skill and the, 
the song, yeah. all of it, but the people who you could just, you could really hear, Lauren Hill, for example, oh, okay, yeah. one of my biggest influences, just hearing her voice, the depth of her voice. Um, Musically, she's uh, a musical influence. We do, we do not condone tax evasion, but she's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm totally putting that part on the shelf, but her uh, voice... <laughs> I just, just back in the heyday was just awesome like I oh, yeah. I, I so oh I just ate it up so well, you, okay when she like when she sang um uh, you, you know the first time I ever heard her sing was on the sister act, uh, on yes. sister, sister yes. act. and she sang that his eyes on the sparrow I oh, my word. I remember sitting in the theater crying because I never totally. heard like that I, I'm with you. I heard that. I'm not kidding. Whoever I was with, I turned to her, I said, that girl's going to be big. Like, there is something about that sound and yep. the way she's singing it that is more than just a voice. Like, um, yeah. So she, sure enough, she blew up. So <laughs> there yeah. you have it. But um, but even, even as simple as like a Karen Carpenter or a Bill Withers or like a Roberta Flack you know these these singers it's just like there's something there and and not a lot of frills with any of those singers and yet i found myself like drawn to um drawn to the songs but also um just the simplicity of their voice and i just thought oh i i don't want to get away from that so much that i'm trying to dress up and and you know put bells and whistles all the time I'll, don't get me wrong I love the bells and whistles but um and you know let's let's do the rangy thing and all of that but like I really wanted to make sure I protect the tone and the um you know just the essence of a voice so sure. Sure. that's kind of been my goal <laughs> throughout yeah. and I think that's great you know I think that I think that there are singers, I mean, I think of mutual singers, friends that we know who are yeah, unbelievable yeah. singers. I mean, we have mutual friends who can sing the, our faces off. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, oh, my word. Yeah. And, yeah. and I've, most of them have been guests on my show and they, they can sing the licks. They can sing the runs. They, they're, they're, oh, man. Yeah. you know, I, I mean, I think I'm just in my pop into my head, Luke Edgman, I've never heard anybody sing runs like him. And, you know, he's a, he's a freak of totally. nature, but it's like, you know, I've I've never been gifted with that. Like I, I can sing some, but I, I'm not like a run singer, you know. And so my thing has always been, okay, Jody, work on your tone, work on the fact that you sound like a woman, and right. you know. And I think that that's something that I think everybody has their thing, you know. Everybody's yeah, got totally. And yours is yours is definitely that smoky soulful kind of uh edge that you have you know like listening to your black and white session and you singing uh, and for those of you that don't know the black and white sessions is a youtube show and you need to subscribe to it because it's it's the best of yes. the best background singers and studio musicians singing one take songs like literally going in the studio and singing to a piano one take and recording it and it's flawless and yours you sang giving you the best that i've got right Yes. Mm -hmm. Which, oh, sister, I'm telling you what. Well, you know, Anita Baker, she's the reason why I sing. Seriously. She's, yeah. Yeah. She's, Hello. She's, she's, she's great. Amazing. Well, yeah, that, it's, um, <laughs> it was an honor to be a part of that, too, by the way. Yes. And y'all, for sure, go subscribe to that. It is, um, it is a treat to watch every every week. I I get excited about whoever who's this week. <laughs> you yeah. know, I always forget. I always a, forget about it. You know, and then totally I'll, I'll get an email or see it on Facebook. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. And so like last week, David Laux. You know, it's David. Right. Oh you man, know, you, he's one of those guys that is just so understated. He doesn't step yes. out. You know, he goes and he sings like that, and you're like, well, for crap's sake. Yeah, <laughs> it's just so good. <laughs> He is so good. He, for sure, talk about somebody I so appreciate, you know, yeah. both as a person and his, but his voice, just, I tell him all the time, I'm like, David, you're one of my favorites. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Still. He's, he's stunning. And, and, um, uh, Missy Hale, you know, everybody tells me, all oh, this. of course, they've listened to the Missy Hale black and white. I had somebody tell me that they're like, 
who's that Missy Hale girl? And I said, well, I mean, she's a session singer, amazing singer. And they're like, well, I've listened to her black and white session a hundred times. I mean, you yeah. know, singers. <laughs> no, and, seriously. So, you're you're right up there with them, my girl. I, I'm just telling you oh, what. You're stunning. You're, you're stunning. So oh, Thank let's, you. listen, let's listen to the other song that we have from you because I want to get both of these. Okay. Things. And then after this song, let's talk about your new project and what the what the goal is and when we can expect to get that and when people can download and all that good stuff. But tell us about this song first. Okay. okay. Um, this song, um, also co-written with Mano Haynes, um, this song, it was sort of one of those organic things. We just, we got together. It was like, you know, let's write a song. Um, it's called wait for me, first of all. And, um, uh, you know, the premise we were kind of thinking of is there's a lot of, um, you know, these soldiers that are overseas and they're, you know, fighting for us and they're, um, it, it kind of, we, we, we went the storyline theme basically, but, um, basically a, a person who's in love and misses, misses, um, the person they're in love with, there's a way and misses them. And so it's, again, it's one of those, those songs that kind of grabs your heart, but, um, and you may or may not be able to relate to it if you have somebody, you know, who's been gone or um, huh. whether that's, you know, I passed think... or they've, you know, they've been they've been serving our country or whatever. But um, anyway, this song, it's a song. I'll explain it. <laughs> I'm I'm doing a terrible job. <laughs> but you but you co-wrote it, right? What's that? You co-wrote it, correct? I did. Yes. Yeah. I think everybody can relate to it from what you're explaining, but I can't wait to hear it. Yeah. Um, again, this is Wait For Me by Kayla Balch. Thank you. Time is moving, slowly moving, I will. 
Okay, so this, I was just, again, typing. I'm going to have to, um, well, you know, I'm going to steal these two songs because you already sent them to me. So oh. <laughs> I'm not going to send it back, but I can't, I can't wait. With this. So tell us a little bit about this. Like, um, you know, what inspired you to go in and, and start doing your own thing, you know, on record, and, and when's it going to be available, and yada, yada, yada. Tell us about that. Oh, you know what? That is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, it, it is kind of an ongoing thing. Um, it's, you know, it's been in process and then kind of gets put on hold and then in process again. Um, but we're about to um, find some time, Mano and I, again, to um, do some more writing and keep keep working on this album. And you know what? I, I really love partnering with him. He's, he's uber talented. He did, he, he did the recent... Um, Andre Crouch project and oh, wow. like so blown away by that that and just being a part of that um actually um a couple of years well Missy Hale she was part of that with me backgrounds um who I know you've interviewed before so throwing her name out there but um anyway that that whole project is a masterpiece and then to be able to work with somebody like that I just thought you know I came to a place um at, where when I was trying to do the solo thing, like maybe before all the session work stuff got going, um, I thought, you know, I'm, I don't know if I'm up for the hustle, hustle, bustle anymore. And, and I'm just not sure I want to do this as a soloist unless I can work with the right partnership and, or the right person, right yeah. producer. And, um, literally within a week or two, I'm at Mano and it was kind of like, whoa, okay, I guess I'm not supposed to quite hang that up yet. You know, like, let's, let's, um, do this. And he was on board and, you know, says, yeah, let's, let's bring this together and see what we come up with. And it's been just really fun to write with him and be a part of, of what he's doing. So. Anyway, we are we are in process, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not totally sure of a release date quite yet. Um, I'm I'm like, let's have a baby first, and then yeah. <laughs> I mean. and then we'll get to it, you know. So no, um, not let my husband and I obviously <laughs> have a baby, of course. Um, and then we'll, and then we'll uh, we'll revisit it, and we be able to create some more some more tunes so sure. yeah well i mean I, look i mean if the first two tunes we've heard tonight are an indication it's going to be a brilliant record seriously i mean it's already it's already way more musical than some other re records that i've listened to as of late that are going to be released. wow thank I'm, you really nice kayla seriously uh you thank know you. um i want to touch on just something that fascinates me personally for just a second is singing um Obviously, you have made a living over the last few years being a session singer and a studio singer. Mm -hmm. and, um, have you taken part in the studio intensive thing that Tim Davis has done at all? You know what? I have been there for um, two of the, yeah, both both of the session singer intensive yeah. that he has done. Um, and my goodness, <laughs> talk about one of my biggest encouragers along this musical journey and um you know I for me um his his support his honesty his brilliance his wisdom and just who he is as a person has influenced me so greatly especially in the last five or six years and um, what he does um literally in that world that like, can't be matched by anybody else um in my That's opinion great. He's great. And he has helped me grow. I, I, you know, I always want to be growing in whatever I'm doing. And he just, um, he always helps that and is honest. And I'll be, you know, I, there's nothing worse than when you're like, when you're in a situation and people are like, oh yeah, that's great. And it's not, <laughs> he's not one of those people. He is so yeah. honest and it, yeah. he helps you by saying, you know what, this isn't good. Like, let's, let's get better. Let's keep going to the next level. And I just so appreciate that about him. He is. Well, okay. Let, yeah. let me ask you that. <laughs> I mean, when you, cause Tim is awesome. I mean, he's just in the last 
six to eight months how he's encouraged me and he's hired me for things. And I mean, he's been awesome. Yeah. Um, but okay. Singing the way that you're singing, keeping the schedule that you're keeping. I mean, I understand that the glee session schedules were chaotic sometimes and all yeah. night. It's <laughs> just nuts. And, you know, um, how did you deal with the vocal fatigue aspect of it? Like what it, for you, what are your, um, procedures or your, uh, what are your ways of dealing with that? I mean, because, you know, we, everybody's like, oh, well, you got to get sleep and sleep is really important. Oh, uh, right. I mean, if you're on the road doing any tour whatsoever, sleep rarely happens, especially the way you want it. But how do you deal with that? You know what? Well, as Tim put it well, one time I, as a session singer, um, you know, if you're, if you're doing that day in, day out, you're kind of like a, a sprinter would be whereas I feel like if you're on the road doing shows, you're a long distance, <laughs> yeah, long distance runner, you know, not runner, but, um, but singer. Like, sure. And it's, it's, it, so you're tra- it's like the muscle, you yeah. know? And, um, so I think just getting, um, getting in that shape, <laughs> Glee definitely put me in the sprinter shape, <laughs> whether I liked it or not, you know, yeah. and that, um, I was, I was able to sustain that somehow. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of specifically the songs that, that I would be called in for were kind of the, you know, the loud or anything with edge or rock or, um, anything that, yeah, just required like the, the power. It was like, okay, you know, power it out, give us 10, like for every take. And, um, somehow I was able to do that by sprinting, <laughs> if you will, being in sprinter shape, I could recover quickly from that. Now, if I had to sing like that for two hours every night, uh, I don't know, you know, I mean, yeah. that, that would have been a different story, but, um, but yeah, there were definitely times when I was like, wow, we just did, we will rock you. And tomorrow morning <laughs> to wake up and do, um, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody or something like that. Yeah. And it's, I mean, hello, like time to just get every minute of sleep you can possibly soak up and pray everything comes out okay. <laughs> I, I think that that's the main thing that most singers and and you know I've I've taught voice lessons in the past and what I try to tell singers is that it's it's not about um, I mean warming up is so vitally important, but it's like, I think the hard part, you know, it was always difficult listening to like Whitney Houston as she sort of began to degrade and her voice wasn't what it was in the eighties and the nineties. And then once we got to the early two thousands, it was like, Oh my gosh, it doesn't even sound like the same person. Um, it's even been difficult to see that with Mariah Carey. Um, but then you look at somebody like Celine Dion and you think, Mm -hmm. okay, everybody makes fun of Celine Dion, but here she is. 25 years later, she's still singing just about the same way that she used to because she takes her instrument seriously. And I know that sounds artsy yeah. fartsy. I know it sounds, you know, oh, my instrument, <laughs> you know, but seriously, it's like, you know, the if you're a good steward of the gift, the gift yes. will serve you for a long time. If you're not, it's so true. Then, then you're screwed. And, you know, yes. I I feel like that that's something that I can ask you because I can tell by the way that you sing and I, and I know you as a person too, that you are a very good steward of the gift that you've been given. Oh, well, thank you. I try to be because I do know it. It is, you have to be, um, you have to be a good steward if you want to keep going and, um, and keep doing this. Yes. You've got to, got to take good care of the voice. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, and and I'll be honest, you know, with with kids and the lack of sleep that comes with that, sometimes that's hard. Yeah. And um, you know, it's just like, boy, you have to really go the extra mile to get as much sleep and drink tons of. I'm such a water drinker. Like I drink tons of water. That is a biggie for me. So, um, but yeah, just caring for it the best I can. Well, and, and you know, I have no doubt that that physical fitness training probably comes in handy for you. And maybe oh, it's the kind of thing totally. that every singer should do something like that, you know, because it is a muscle. It is, um, mm-hmm. you have to treat it just like you would treat it, you know, like I, you know, I, I, I do spin class three times a week and yeah, 
it's intense sometimes, like especially to the spin class that I do on Thursdays, like to, or on Wednesdays. I, I seriously sometimes walk away in tears. I, it's so difficult. And but you know the thing is, if I didn't stretch before that class, I would never be able to finish that class. It doesn't matter how good a shape you're in or you think That's you're in. true. And um, you know, I, I just I think that probably you have an a fair advantage, I don't want to say an unfair advantage, but you have a fair advantage in learning the fact that, you know, to be physically fit and to perform physically, you have to maintain, you have to be disciplined. And so maybe that's why God had you be a physical fitness major. (laughs) Seriously. No, you know what? And I will say like running is my thing. Like I have been doing that consistently for probably, probably 15 years, actually, since I moved out here doing road races. I mean, I still do to this day because it's important to me. And I just know, um, you know, the, the maintenance part of it, sometimes it's, it can get tough as we all know, but yet sticking with it and knowing that I love it, like it, it, it is so important and it's so helpful for me. Um, just not, not just physically, but you know, for my mind, my spirit, (laughs) everything. So I'm a big, big, um, yeah, fan of, of, hey, pick something you like and, and stick with it. So, yeah. And, you know, the interesting thing is, is being around the people that we've sung with. I mean, uh, the people that we have in common too, I can honestly totally. say that they're all, they all think the same way. They've, they're all solid. They all take care of themselves. Everybody tries to eat totally. really well and they, you know, and that's just a big deal. You know, I mean, I think right. if, if you want to be the best at what you, what you've been given, then you've got to you got to cherish that gift. And I, I, I want to, we're, we're, it's so crazy because can you believe it? We are out of time and I could talk to you oh. forever. And there's a thousand <laughs> questions I didn't even get to ask you, but we are going to leave with your black and white sessions. I've asked Marie, oh, I- Tony, our producer to get that up and running. And so I, I just want to take a second and say, thank you so much for taking this time. Oh. I know that you are great with child. Um, <laughs> And we made it through without you giving birth. The maker. Right, right, yay. <laughs> but seriously, I can't wait to, to hear more about your music. And listen, when you do get the record done, I would love for yeah. you to come on and maybe maybe we can get a guitar player and you come on the show and just maybe do a few songs acoustically. And we oh, can we could just that do would whole, be great. We could do a whole special on the record. I would love to do that. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. And seriously, it is such an honor um, I just appreciate you, who you are, what you do, what you're passionate about. So thank well, you. Thanks, Kayla. <laughs> God bless you. God bless that baby. Thank you so much. Right. Thanks, everybody. We're going to leave you with Kayla Balt singing, giving you the best that I got from her black and white sessions. Thanks for joining us for uh, Backline. Love you guys. See you next week. There's something I can give you In exchange for everything you give to me Read my mind and make me feel just fine When I think my peace of mind is out of reach The scales are sometimes unbalanced And you bear the weight of all that has to be I hope you see that you can lean on me And together we can calm the stormy sea And we love so strong and so unselfishly And I'll tell you now that I made a vow I'm giving you the best that I've got, baby Yes, I'll tell you now, oh, that I made a vow I'm giving you the best that I've got, honey Everybody's got opinions 
about the way they think our story's gonna end. Some folks feel it's just a superficial thrill. Everybody's gonna have to think again. Cause we love so strong and so unselfishly. They don't bother me. Oh, so I'm gonna keep on giving. Keep on giving you the best that I've got Listen, baby Somebody understands me Somebody gave his heart for me I stumbled my whole life long Always on my own But now I'm home My weary mind is rested And I feel as if my home Is in your arms Fears are all gone I like the sound of your song And I think I want to sing it forever And we love so strong And so unselfishly And I made a vow So I tell you now I'm giving you the best that I've got Listen, baby I'm giving you the best that I've got, baby.